1981, four months to go for the Mr. Olympia. My fiance, the girl I was gonna marry, left me for my training partner. And I was shocked, I was startled. I'm like, oh my God, four months to go, I can't train, I'm, I'm messed up. I'm hurt, and somehow I go, I go, I gotta get through this. I wanted to go over and just kill the guy. And for some reason that year, all the hurt went into my training. I just opened the door up to Gold's Gym, my arms would grow. Every exercise that I did worked greater than ever. Anything negative that happened to me turned out to be an opportunity in disguise. And I look at life that way. Nobody is, has an easy life. Life will drive you down to the ground, like squatting. I learned about life in the gym. Everything I know about life, I learned at the squat rack. I learned how to fail in the gym. I learned how to fail and fall on my face many, many times that you've never read about. It. Nothing, nothing's like squats. You can do leg presses, but why? Why do an inferior movement? Why do a movement that where it looks good, but it produces hardly any result. Come on! Yeah. Come on. Okay. Congratulations, you achieved failure. Failure has been achieved, thank God. Now, the only place to go from failure is to win. Nobody wants to go that far, it's too scary. Nothing's changed since the 70s, nothing, except people train not as hard. I mean, there's a reason people don't squat, it's hard, it's hard. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy, what looks showy. That is the secret. Absolutely. ¿Qué pasa, señores? Bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo en el canal. Y al fin estamos ante uno de los documentales más esperados. Y es ni más ni menos que el de Tom Platz. Una historia que lo tiene todo. Estamos hablando del atleta que quizás plasme mejor la verdadera esencia de lo que es el culturismo. Una historia que tiene desamor, superación, motivación, ir contra lo establecido y que nos deja un brutal aprendizaje final. Alguien que pese a no tener la mejor genética, consiguió dejar un legado y ser mucho más recordados que algunos culturistas que sí lograron vencer el Mr. Olympia. Y aunque ese no fuese el caso de Tom Platz, sí que dejó para la historia probablemente las mejores piernas de todo el culturismo. Unas piernas que se forjaron a raíz de una filosofía de entrenamiento nunca antes vista hasta la fecha. Y es por eso que es imposible que veas este vídeo y no salgas de él con unas ganas terribles de destrozar la pierna, de llegar hasta el final y de hacer una sentadilla pulcra y impoluta. Pero por esta misma razón, si luego de este vídeo quieres hacer una de esas sentadillas de las que Tom Platz estaría orgulloso, pues yo te recomiendo que veas el canal de Fit Generation, todos los consejos que dan para hacer una sentadilla bien profunda, con mucho control y que sea vertical. Aquí nos dan varios consejos, ejercicios que podemos hacer para poder tener una sentadilla que esté ejecutada bien técnicamente y que realmente contribuya a que nuestras piernas crezcan. Y en definitiva, ganar control sobre esa sentadilla, que es un movimiento realmente complejo, que a veces hay que dar dos pasos atrás para poder dar 10 hacia adelante. Entonces, os dejo su canal en la descripción, porque en él vais a encontrar un contenido mucho más técnico que al final yo no trato, pero que os recomiendo que veáis si queréis hacer las cosas bien. Pero volviendo al vídeo, hoy vamos a tratar de entender las motivaciones que había detrás de probablemente el culturista más carismático que jamás haya habido. Pero ¿de dónde sale toda esa pasión y todo ese aura que rodea a Tom Platz? Pues para comprenderlo, vayamos a donde comienzan todas las historias, que es a su principio. Pues bien, la principal inspiración de Tom siempre había sido Arnold, pero él no era uno de esos culturistas altos de grandes clavículas y enorme presencia. When I was a young man, I said that I will not be a victim to my genetics. I will not be a victim to my genetics. I don't care. I don't care. I, have a, I don't have a small waist. Hell with it. My genetics will be a victim to me. That was my, my plan. And it was my, my God gave me this mentality. Sin embargo, Tom Platz sí tuvo una cosa que acabó haciendo levantar las gradas de allá donde fuese. Y eso fueron las piernas y los cojones. But God gave me the leg thing. I, I, I gotta tell you, most of those squats I did, I wasn't doing it. It wasn't me. It was God finishing the last 10 reps, okay? Because I, I don't know. I, I was done. I don't know where it came from. Some, God was pulling up that weight. I learned about life in the gym. Everything I know about life, I learned at the squat rack. I learned how to fail in the gym. I learned how to fail and fall on my face many, many times that you never read about. Exaggerate every 
tired. Never, never relax. Okay. Tom Platz, con sus 90 kilos de peso en máxima condición, sus proporciones hercúleas, su cabello rubio y desbordante simpatía, representa la plasmación real de uno de los ejemplares del sueño americano. Por eso es probablemente uno de los culturistas más influyentes de toda la historia. Thomas Steven Platz nace en Oklahoma el 26 de junio de 1955, apodado el Águila Dorada, recibe en la Navidad de 1965 una máquina de pesos que su padre compró a Joe Wader. Tom empezó a entrenar en el sótano de su casa, luego compitió en amateur hasta que ganó el World Amateur Championships y entonces desde que se hizo pro, los nueve años siguientes compitió como profesional para un único fin ganar el Mister Olympia. Y es desde ese año que comienza la auténtica obsesión de Tom Platz por llegar a tocar el cielo del culturismo. Remember also that every man in this competition is already a world champion. Tom Platz, quien había entrado como un completo desconocido al mundo del culturismo, gana el Mister Universo y se comienza a preparar para el Mister Olympia de 1980, su segundo Mister Olympia antes de saltar al estrellato. Año 1980. Un joven Tom Platz aparece en el escenario del Mr. Olympia el mismo año que Arnold anunció su regreso tras su retiro. A muchos les sonará este Mr. Olympia por la gran polémica que hubo en cuanto a los resultados finales. La empresa de Joe Wader dio como ganador a un Arnold que para nada llegaba en su mejor versión. Esto hizo que culturistas como Frank Zane o Mike Menzer terminaran boicoteando la decisión de la IFBB, lo que les hizo anunciar que no se presentarían al Mr. Olympia del año siguiente. Y este suceso colocaba a Tom Platz todavía más en el punto de mira porque pasaba a ser una opción real para ser ganador del concurso más prestigioso del culturismo. Consciente de la oportunidad que se le presentaba a Tom, decide apostarlo todo a ese próximo año. La vida parecía sonreírle. Anteriormente se había mudado a California para estar más en contacto con sus ídolos y en definitiva con el culturismo del Golf's Gym. El Águila Dorada podía hacer historia. Las mejores piernas tenían una opción real a ser Mr. Olympia. I'm still a little kid I used to be. You know, I moved out to California. I moved out in 1978 with 50 bucks and a plane ticket and that's all I had to my name. I lived with 25 people across the street from the gym and I dreamed And I, and I, every day, and I still do about winning Mr. Olympia. When you pose, you can't talk to the audience, but you, you talk to them with your movement pattern. And that's what I'm telling them. I'm telling them about my life, about the beach about some of the women in my life, and I'm sharing that with them. When you give to an audience, they give back to you, and you all leave that much higher. That's my thrill. That's my thrill. The real competition is between you and yourself in the gym preceding the event. If I thought about Lee Haney so much, and I thought about Mike Krishna, and I thought about Zane, I'd go crazy. The contest is between me and myself. I love the gym, and I love the office. So I feel that you've got to be an athlete and you've got to be a businessman as well. You've got to be able to juggle those things. I have a 1960 Corvette uh, at the moment, which is, which is my baby. Going to the gym in the morning and feeling the sun starting to get a little hot. And I just the feeling of, of California, of the beach. You can hear the beach, you can see the beach, you can smell the air. Pero cuando todo iba mejor que nunca, cuando parecía que había llegado el momento de Tom Platz, la vida le sonreía. Estaba en un buen momento a nivel personal, en su mejor momento a nivel profesional, pero justo antes, 
de afrontar su mayor reto, su prometida le traiciona y se queda a tan solo cuatro meses del Mister Olimpia con una situación muy difícil de levantar. My, my girlfriend, Corinne, left me for my training partner. It devastated me. It rocked my world. It hurt me so bad. Y así es como el que iba a ser el mejor año de Tom Platz se convierte en un auténtico infierno. Sufre ese abandono, cosa que no le hunde, sino que le potencia todavía más. Porque son tu corazón y el mío. Todo ese dolor lo descarga en los entrenamientos previos a la competición de 1981. Hasta tal punto aprovechó esos entrenos que presentó el mejor físico que jamás hemos visto de Tom Platz hasta la fecha. Era su campeonato. Había opciones reales a conseguirlo. Se enfrentaba ni más ni menos que al retorno de Franco Columbo. También estaban en esa línea Chris Dickerson y Dani Padilla. Y si miramos el 1v1 de Franco Columbo contra Tom Platz, vemos como todas las poses laterales son de Tom, unos cortes en las piernas históricos, un tren superior con mucha profundidad en cada uno de sus cortes. En cambio vemos en Franco Columbo unas piernas que no pueden competir con las de Tom. Además en su torso presenta una ligera ginecomastia que claramente le restan puntos. Pero si recordamos la conjetura en la que nos encontramos, año 1981, Año después del tan polémico Mister Olimpia de Arnold, Frank Columbo era su mejor amigo, el hombre que rellenaba las portadas junto a él. Era un retorno, la historia se volvía a cumplir. La IFBB, que ya había sido boicoteada, le entrega el Mister Olimpia a Franco Columbo y Tom Platz ya nunca volvería a presentar un físico como el de ese año. Porque existe otro que eres. I went to the gym and my ex-training partner and my ex-fiancé were kissy face, huggy bear in the gym and I'm there, they're at the same time with me. Use this hurt as fuel, as energy. I decided to take all that energy and put it into the gym. I would train like every day, and every day look better and better. I'm in the mirror, I'm scared of myself in the mirror. Look at training as uh, something that builds character, work ethic. Look at training as something that really builds confidence. Look at something that training that shows you how to fail and how shows you how to get up and win. There's much more to bodybuilding than just building muscle. Character building, uh, confidence, uh, integrity, uh, how to lose, how to win, uh, the work ethic. That's bodybuilding as far as I see it. Los siguientes años de su carrera competitiva, Tom Platz no igualaría ese tercer puesto en 1981. Pero cierto es que desde ese momento, una vez todo el mundo se enteró de su ética de trabajo, de su mentalidad y de su forma de ver el culturismo, Tom empezó a ser el culturista más alardeado en cada show que salía. Tom Platz no tenía un Mr. Olympia pero tenía el respeto de todo el mundo del culturismo. Tell me what's what's the most exciting moment of your life? Can you recall anything? Have you have you ever, have you ever stood there and cried and choked up or What's the most thrilling moment of your entire life? As far as competition, as far as I suppose it would have to be connected with bodybuilding. 86 Olympia. Yeah. Why? Place my lowest as a result of the show. I was able to go out there. I was able to walk to the front of the stage. I was able to have people look at me and their eyes opened up. Everybody in the audience stood up and yelled something. I don't know what it was. And they yelled, put their arms up, and nobody was on the earth. Everybody was just like spiritually and mentally not on the earth. It was the most incredible, the most meaningful experience ever in my life. Money can't buy that. I didn't get the title, but I touched that. And when you touch that, 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 that was everything. I'm 
our wrath. You have to conjure up those, conjure up those feelings and those, and those commitments that you gave to yourself and you promised yourself, you fucking promised yourself to be the best fucking person. That, that is what makes you true. That is what makes muscles grow. Nobody fucking knows the secret. That is it. I have no fucking genetics. If you got that and genetics, y tras agendar su retiro, el nombre de Tom Platt sigue sonando en cada gimnasio del mundo a día de hoy, especialmente los días de pierna, por su particular método de entrenamiento. Él decía que había que olvidarse del peso. Priorizaba su técnica en sentadilla más que cualquier otra cosa. Decía que nuestra mente y nuestra capacidad física no van de la mano. Que cuando nuestras piernas todavía pueden seguir tirando, existe una barrera mental que nos dice que no sigamos. Por esta razón, Tom Platts hablaba de contar de 5 en 5 repeticiones. De esta forma eliminamos la barrera mental que nos impide continuar con nuestras series. A día de hoy, famosos son tantos y tantos competidores que acuden a a él para poder comprobar dónde está el verdadero límite de sus capacidades. Estamos muy desacostumbrados a ir al 100% y Tom Platz es la primera vía mundial a desbloquear el fallo. I want you to do what you normally do. I'll critique a little bit, maybe make a few adjustments. Mm -hmm. When it comes time for that one set, you know, when you think you're done, totally done, you have at least five more, five more reps, okay? We'll go there. We'll go there. So what, what would you say is the most, impo most important part about the leg training? Well, everyone nowadays, first thing they do in squats is they lean forward. The nose comes this way. The nose should go this way. This way. Like you're jumping in water, not diving. It's the most important thing. Everybody starts wrong, starts incorrectly. I made one suggestion to David just now. Within seconds he made the adjustment. The technique has been bastardized to make it about hip flexors, lower back. I want the quads to be the prime mover. Even if you use less weight, I don't care if you use the bar, use your quads. That's what people forgot about. But if you're a bodybuilder on the physique stage, forget about the weight. Just make sure you use your legs. The prime mover is your quadriceps. Huh? Good. I can't manage 20, 30, 40 reps. I can't, it's, too, it's like I have a nervous breakdown. But I can manage five. So I just want you to do five, Another five without stopping the set. Another five without stopping the set. Second floor, bro. Go out there and fail miserably. The weight on the ground, toss the weight, but achieve failure. Achieve failure. If you can do that, you can also win. If you can fail, you can also win. And all winners have failed. That's the goal here today, that last 5%. All right. Right, yeah, keep using your legs, keep using your legs. Two. Three, five, better rest, okay, there's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful, David, come on. There's ten. Yeah. Keep going, come on. Now, come on, lightweight. Lightweight, come on. Uh, you got two more for 15. Did one more for 15. All right, now, now, uh, five more. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Come on, Dave. Come uh, on. Drive. Excellent. Excellent. Great job. Yes. Say yes. Uh, yes. Three more uh, for 20. Three more. Drive. Uh, I'm strong. You're getting stronger. Come on. Congratulations. Ah.
You achieve failure. Failure has been achieved, thank God. Now, the only place to go from failure is to win. You have to achieve failure. You have to take it that far. Nobody wants to go that far, it's too scary. But you know something, I got news for you. That's where winning is. It always has been. Nothing's changed since the 70s, nothing. Except people train not as hard. I think I I kind of lost, the, lost that uh, ability to go to 100%. You know, I, I feel when I was younger, like when I was 20, I didn't think that much. And it was easier for me to go to maybe 99%. I have all those doubts in my head sometimes, doing leg training. Nothing compares to squats. You can do leg presses, but why? Why do an inferior movement? Why do a movement that looks good, but it produces hardly any results. I don't care how much weight you can use. I mean, there's a reason people don't squat. It's hard, it's hard. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy, what looks showy. Forget about it. In fact, forget about the weight, just squat correctly. Like, that is the secret, absolutely. Y bueno, gente, esto que acabáis de ver es una serie llevada al fallo por ni más ni menos que Tom Platz. Y quise poner el entrenamiento completo con David Hoffman porque es realmente impresionante lo que puede llegar a transmitir una simple serie de sentadilla, un simple entrenamiento de piernas. Y es que hay una parte pasional dentro de esto del culturismo que a veces parece que está encerrada y que no sale a la luz, pero culturistas como Tom Platz, por su forma de ser, por su mentalidad, logran transmitir esa parte del culturismo que no siempre alcanza y entiende todo el mundo. Y espero que este vídeo haya sido una pequeña contribución y un acercamiento de esto a lo que me refiero. Pero antes de ir con lo último ya del vídeo, me gustaría deciros que la mejor forma que tenéis de apoyar este tipo de contenido es siguiéndome en mi Instagram que os dejo por aquí, porque aquí no puedo traer contenido de forma tan recurrente y diaria, pero en Instagram sí lo estaré haciendo. Además de que voy a hacer un sorteo muy pronto, yo que tú no perdería la oportunidad de seguirme por aquí. Me encantaría que me dejes en los comentarios cuál quieres que sea el próximo documental que haga, pues estaré leyendo a todos. Así que dicho esto, un saludo, un abrazo y nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. You can't anybody tell you that you can't do something, but especially yourself. Most of us will tell ourselves that we can't, or we're less than, or we're not good enough, we're not worthy, they're better than us. <laughs> You've got to think a different way. Think about what you really want. What do you really want in life? It's not forever. Life is temporary. You might as well do exactly what you want to do in this life, because pretty soon it's going to be your last day. You know? I mean, that, that's just the facts. So you might as well live every day as if it's your last day. And do what you really want to do in life. And love what you do. And uh, do what you love. If you want something bad enough and you have a dream, it will happen if you make it happen. You have to do the work, of course. You have to do the work. You just got to believe it, put it in your head, and go move forward with that every day. Find that impossible thing. Do the impossible. You can do it. I'm, I'm certain you can. Uh, live for the impossible. Make it happen. One piece at a time. It will happen. Dreams do come true. If you really put your heart and soul into it, you will get it. Do what you love. Love what you do. It's time to start living, folks.